Hi, John here. Um, today is Wednesday the 12th of October 2016 and this little video is for um, uh, Royal New Zealand Navy, John Harrison. Um, John, um, I'm just sending you a email and a letterhead for the events on the 28th of October 2016. That's the Declaration of Independence Day that we are inviting you along uh, with your Kapahaka group if I hope you can uh, bring them with you uh, or others who want to come from the Navy if John Martin does not come. I'm here to represent Kingi Total and his um, hapu on the Tiki Marae and the Whakamininga <coughs> eight tribes in the Ngāpui boundary district area of their <coughs> inherited titles. So um, if you come, uh, it would start at five o'clock in the morning. It will start at five o'clock in the morning till seven. And uh, we're hoping you would um, take part in the 182 years of celebrating this flag that King William IV gave us uh, to protect us in our commercial trading business between here and Britain, England, UK, government, the Royal Navy, British, and the military, British military, protectorate for our business. That's from uh, the first start, 10th of April, 1834, um, part of Whakamininga, the gathering of the tribes who got the design for the flag they wanted to use with the four stars in the corner. And that was set up at uh, Tengairi on the riverside, uh, beside the sea, under the Pohutukawa tree. They formed their alliance and um, uh, with Ngāpui tribes, that's where the original uh, first contact of the British uh, Navy and its immigrants to take up the land uh, at Russell, Kororareka. The flag is raised now on the top of Mikey Hill at Kororareka to mark that occasion. So what I'm saying here is after 182 years it would have been fitting if the British Navy were here but because you're here uh, then we um, are expecting you to take part of that celebration and with your um, um, cultural group uh, or those that are in charge of those particular uh, parts of the Navy that can um, form a group to come over. Okay, it's fairly early in the morning, but um, that's how it's always been outside of business hours at the Waitangi Marae. Inside the Marae, we're going inside the Marae now that we have... Um, permission to um, go inside and do our business. That's leading on from the 15th of October uh, when we went inside the Waitangi Marae uh, to enforce our history of the Whakamininga in the 1834 um, Confederation of Whakamininga uh, Hapu and to link that to Te Te Marae and to the Waitangi Marae um, so that we're under the one house. There were suggestions that the government wanted to shift the procession of Waitangi Day across there. This is fitting to put us all together. Times are moving on and the world is changing. We have to combine all our national efforts behind this flag, which will send us around the world, that's what it's for, 
you take the trade from this country, Aotearoa New Zealand, around the world. We have set up uh, trade in 250 countries online in preparation for us to start using the flag for what it's meant to be, commercial trading bank investment business in partnership with Britain. Still there, it's still a private contract uh, between us and Britain. So that's the part we are celebrating, the 1834 Declaration of Independence flag. And then from that occasion of the 10th of April, 1834, at Kororareka shifted to Te Te Marae on the Waitangi blocks. And so they formed the Confederation of Chiefs there um, in Titi on the uh, Rangatira, the Tau Rangatira, Popo in the paddock there. You'll see in the camping ground there at um, Waitangi, Titi Marae, where the chiefs met coming from Kororareka to there to bring the mana from there to there to absorb all the rest of the tribes up in, in the nation. Okay, so that's how that part, part one, Kororareka, first contract. That's when the immigrants came from Britain with a contract because they had bought or got agreements with the landowners of that particular land block. Be here, Naki uh, And from there, that was brought over to Naki. Uh, Rahiri and Ngāti Kawa on the Waitangi land blocks. So I'm just splitting off the two so that you can see the difference between the Navy, first ship, the mast of the ship of Admiralty that landed there with their captain of the ship, the surrogate King William. Okay, so we got ship number one, private contract number one, property, land, Land occupiers and settlers, hapu, chiefs, and the immigrant from Britain, land occupiers with their paper document titles from Britain. So the chiefs in some way over there on that Tingairi land met with the white man, Pākehā, immigrants, under the orders of King William IV at that time, 1830 to 1837 reign, proclaimed the land belonged to the king. Okay, that's the first sign of a contract. They had to have something to come to from where they came, whence they came, here, and who was here. The native was here. So that formed the basis of the contract I'm talking about the beginnings of this commercial trading bank investment British protectorate flag sovereign authority jurisdiction of Admiralty ship. Okay, remember that? Admiralty mortgage liens on the land. They had got liens over the land where they were going to settle pre-settling here. This is the official part, not the ones who were already here. This is the British title. Okay, they came from Australia here illegally, but the British came here and settled there, then brought their white man here, the ones that got here before that order came in, to put them into contract with us. Okay, so the contract formed the basis of this flag of jurisdiction of partnership in a private contract that had nothing to do with anybody. It's just the chiefs there and the King of England. Okay, so from there, contract one, Admiralty ship on Mikey Hill at Kororareka Russell. That's the form, the basis of the 10th of April 1834 contract with the Hapus there. Natirehia and the other tribes of Napuhi around the area and the 
Nāki Rahidi Nāki Kawa came after on the second contract. Okay, so they bring that contract over to this other ship. One ship there already, the other ship parked itself on the land. Just the, the, the British people parked their ship over there on the land and put the Admiralty ship master as an authority to someone. Okay? It's an authority to someone higher than anyone else with documents that made contract. So that Admiralty ship number two on the treaty grounds of Ngāti Kawa and Ngāti Rahiri uh, lands, native lands, is the charge hand contractor <coughs> of the British king, okay, King William IV. So now, on that piece of land, already the government had set up themselves from Australia with their government in Wellington. And so now, a new contract on the 1835 Declaration of Independence um, on the 28th of October was formed by the chiefs on that TT block from the other TT blocks to this TT block placed on a Waitangi block, right? The TT block meant to be over there, but they bought it over here. That's what the government did in those days. They swapped lands around and made people mix each other up so that they got lost. Anyway, that's Titi land blocks. Number two contract with the Confederation of Chiefs around the country. Okay, that one was just for those eight tribes, Ngāpui. That's what Mohi, Mohi's wife was, Ngāpui. So I got all that history for that. There's no argument about that. And the tonga has got the titles for Ngāti land at Waitangi. So I've got all that. And I got that from Hare Ututonga. He's in the Confederation at the time. I was in the Confederation at the time. As a native assessor with Mohi Manikau, Hare Ututonga, Rihari Kake and Machi Tarawa and Dawu Hongi. Um, who else was there? Mohi Manikau. And... Um, a few others. Um, I just can't think at the moment. But those were the main ones I dealt with, with the uh, overriding titles they kept to themselves. They let me have to keep in safekeeping. Okay, so in a way I'm holding all those native titles, the original big ones on the A3 paper, straight to Britain. Alright, so now we have that contract tied in with John Key's 1840 obelisk title on Titi Marae, outside, as you see the obelisk, that's John Key's 1840 treaty, it's got no end date contract, you see it's illegal, I just say that it's illegal, but they still ran with it, that's why they got assumed sovereignty title, and they got principles of the Treaty of Waitangi, I just want to make that quite clear, John. Uh, that I'm just dealing with contracts, commercial contracts, getting us ready to trade around the world with this flag. Since John Key had a go at changing the flag through the war flag, the uh, Union Jack flag of New Zealand, away and put the fern up there, thinking that everybody was going to go after that. It had no basis of history, nothing. It was just a commercial gimmick for his private business corporations. Okay, so that was a no-no. As far as we're concerned, he offended us, the chiefs, even on Titi Marae, went straight past to have his own hui with the TPPA, the 16 states, countries in the Pacific, signed the agreement without coming to check with the chiefs of the Whakamininga, in the first instance, and the Confederation of Chiefs on the Titi land blocks and the Waitangi land blocks. Okay, so now all we're doing is putting the history right in saying that that Waitangi Marae King's Bench Court in some way or another has been used without the Chief's knowledge as a business with someone's authority. 
It had to come from a flame. It's come out of this flame, John. It's come out of this flame. And so we're going to boost things along with economies and someone to trust in trade under this flag in a proper manner with Britain and the authority to go free passage through the world with it. So I'm hoping that when you come, I've made an agenda for five o'clock and who's speaking and we haven't got much time because I don't want to go too long and those people who are speaking will be selected to speak because we're doing all our talking on the 26th and the 27th on Titi Marae about everything. So all we're going to the Waitangi Marae is to spend an hour and a half, right up to two hours at the most, inside that marae and at the base of the Admiralty Ship Number 2 contract of mortgage liens. That authority and to raise the flag with the right, right procedures as, as if the captain was there from Britain proclaiming the land belonged to the king and we're proclaiming the land belongs to the hapu chiefs and the people of New Zealand right? don't forget we're not doing it for ourselves we're all inclusive on working together from today times not the past we want to bury the past in its archives once and for all and move on. There's no time for the younger generation to see us struggling all the way through the years, for 182 years struggling and not getting anywhere because no one understood what the flag meant. It's got a lot of elements in it that should have got us wealth before anything else from all the resources, natural resources here. So, I'm saying, when it comes to uh, your turn to talk, uh, John, or whoever's representing the Navy, um, uh, as your own um, role, that you know what to do, for the Navy at least, and there for us, the Hapu, is there for us, but we have to get working to get revenue to self-run and self-look after ourselves, the hapu in the first instance, and New Zealand in the second instance, the rest. We want to do it in that fashion on that day to celebrate all together as a national day. Okay? So the 6th of October, uh, 6th of February is a, is a Waitangi day, but the other day is 28th is the Confederation of the Flag Day to Britain. Okay? So I'm hoping that you will, uh, after the chiefs have talked in the marae, to have your talk uh, of what you're looking at, that of what I'm writing, and briefly, uh, a, a little bit of the history of, of the Navy to Britain or New Zealand. And then, um, we won't have any haka inside the party. We will go from that uh, karaki inside to the flag star, Admiralty Ship Number Two contract. We will go through the um, role with the uh, Jim Wicker too. He, he he or he will do the karakia and raise the flag. Uh, up, and I'm hoping right on that time that the kapahaka from the Navy and the Waitangi Marae uh, National Trust, Waitangi National Trust Committee um, will have their haka group there to celebrate that occasion at the same time while the flag is going up to the top. Okay, so that's that's basically all that we required in that space of time uh, for you. And Kingi will be uh, reciting in Māori 
uh, when the flag's going up. And once it's up, then um, I'm hoping, this is a long shot off, that the Navy may have a 21-gun salute to mark this 182 years to Britain, on Britain's behalf, Navy, Brit British Navy behalf and military and Westminster government. Okay, uh, so I'm hoping that will mark our coming together inside that body so that all the celebrations of New Zealanders will be on that land from now on. It'll form part of the museum, of the then and the now, and the where to, as a people, one people. Okay, so we're leading the world, John, with this flag, to go around the world. We're not going as Maori on their own. We're going as people of Aotearoa. Okay? New Zealand on the other hand, but I'm saying we are all going together under this flag. Now, I have got there that uh, we're using the 1832-1837 Acts of Westminster Parliament as a Commonwealth Government, Maui Crown Commonwealth Government of the world. That's what this flag is supposed to be set up for, to go around the world. We'll end up with ships, but not just now. I've got something set up for It'll form the basis of our commercial operations here in New Zealand and the Pacific Islands and the world for that matter, in 250 countries where this flag will be flying. So I'm hoping that once the flag is up, the chiefs will give you permission and the whakamininga in the first place will give you the permission to put it up on the top of the mast of the New Zealand Navy ships. The New Zealand Royal Air Force planes and their armour vehicles as a one nation state. Okay, whatever that name will come out would be up to the people and up to the hapu of the confederation. So long as we know now we're going as a confederation of chiefs and all their immigration people here in New Zealand. Okay, they're occupying the lands. And so we're forming the Maui King William Party here. And we already have it set, ready to go into Westminster uh, Parliament when we get there. King E and I will go there, officially go there, me as a land commissioner of native lands, not John Key will be alright with his government. We're not going to alter anything but the flag and its jurisdiction of Admiralty in the sea around the world. And the contract we honoured with the British military, Navy, Westminster Parliament, King William the Fourth and his descendant living in London, King Ernest Augustus V. 68 years old, should be by now, and his son reigning after that. Ernest Augustus, Prince Regent. Okay, so King William, King Ernest Augustus V <coughs> is the legitimate present King of Britain, UK. I just want to make that quite clear. He is the king we're swearing our oath of office to. We're swearing our oath of office to his son, Ernest Augustus, Prince Regent. We're swearing off of our off oath of office <coughs> to uh, King Ernest Augustus V's father, King George III, the founding of America under this Admiralty laws that we're using 1830 to 1837 applies inside that whare. Waitangi Marae, Kingsley's Court. Okay? So, King George III, we
we are oath of office to? We swear our oath of office to his sons, his three sons, King George IV, King William IV, and King Ernest Augustus I. Okay, that's it. That's what this flag, the four corners of the earth, the stars, the stars, eight point star of St. Patrick's order, is the new world order to send us around the world. Right? The eight point star, the sheriff of that court, Waitangi Marae, King's Bench Court, is extended into the counties, the district courts right through the world. Okay, right through the world with the new world order the Pope is commanding at the moment. Okay, so the St. Patrick's order was in Westminster Parliament in custody of its documents until the Queen gave it to the Pope. Queen Elizabeth II gave it to the Pope. So the Pope's got it and King William III fought hard in a war battle with King James the fourth and wrested off him, booted him out of the uh, crown and took over the crown in Westminster. King James was the, the king then, the Catholic Church, and took this eight point star St. Patrick's order from him and kept it. By default of Prince uh, King Ernest Augustus going into Westminster and the fact that we're his partner live, live here and live in London, UK, King Ernest Augustus the fifth is live and well. So we rest this eight point star New World Order off the Pope back into Westminster. Okay, the Queen had no right to take it away. That belongs to the King. So the King gets it back. I'm here as a surrogate King to the eight point star. To my chiefs, being <coughs> charged with this position from the chiefs. Okay, and King Itaura and Moi Manikau, <coughs> Haleo Tatonga, Richard Kake. Ajitarawa, Delby Humi, and a few others. I can't name them. I can't name the others. I'm just talking about the ones I know. Uh, so that's the end of that. There's no argument with all the documents here. All the documents are here. And Sunakora has the rest of the documents for the land, titles, and Gisborne. Okay, so she's in the Confederation as well. And very knowledgeable and went to Harvard and knows everything back to front. So I have a handle on that with her. Um, unfortunately she might not be able to make it to the 28th, being older now, but however I'm acknowledging her and Kingi Todora <coughs> as being conversant with everything I say. They'll go with. Okay, so once again, I'm hoping that the Navy will put on a 21-gun salute to mark this occasion with the flag so that the Navy here can use it. I'm saying the Navy should use it. From what I say and what I write, it will be authorized finally inside that marae. That's where you witness what the chief says goes. Chiefs of today will authorize the flag to be raised. It'll be raised here, raised in Parliament, here, and raised in every court throughout this country and the world for that matter, the courthouses. Okay, this is the justice that comes directly out of Westminster straight here and straight to every other country where the Queen has gone to repair the damage to the King's Bench Court. Okay, we're making corrections here. And we've got people already waiting in Britain 
and America watching all the time everything I put online is the truth and nothing but the truth so help me God John we're on to something quite real here in our time to settle the peace settle the grievances this way no short change no grieving and no moaning in the story. Okay, so that's what we're expecting to happen. And I'll send you the email in this little video with a PDF file on top of it uh, before I go to the gym. I'm going to keep my energy levels up so I can keep up with you guys uh, and the Chiefs and not lose a breath talking. Uh, I will be speaking inside the party, but all I'll be doing is the short bit in English and Kingy will um, convey that message and lock it into history, fixed for life in Māori. Okay, so that makes ticker work in the flag and on the land as the gatekeepers there for the rest of this country with sufficient evidence that will challenge any insufficient evidence in this country for that matter the Auckland District Court I had a court hearing there John and the police CIB detectives Natalie Flower Doom Brown and the rest of the people there inside there have been battling for 12 years with one piece of land that long to get some justice finally cracked unfortunately for the police they lost a case against me and on top of that they let me out of the court hearing I never got my day in court you see but never mind I'm just saying on a positive note the police on the other hand are good but there are some instances where they are not they are actually breaking their own law so that's that but I'll leave it at that and try to repair the communications gaps between Maori and the Crown I'm talking about the King's Crown Corporation on this side and the Queen's Crown Corporation on this side. Two different flag situations. One with complete authority of Admiralty, real Admiralty, and jurisdiction to do what we do. And this one with no jurisdiction, no Queen, and no authority of where they get it from to run the country. I'm saying here John, the government will carry on with his business, nobody will stop business because of what we do, it's just that we're telling the government what we're going to do legally and legitimately for the first time in 182 years. That's how it's going to pan out. John? That's all I want to say for now. So I'm hoping that I get an answer from you, a positive answer, and we can make a successful historic occasion marked in history right in front of the world, and we're all over the world on Facebook and YouTube watching every move we make from now. Okay? The indigenous people of the world are watching and waiting for this land. They're waiting for us because we're the only ones that can do it, John. We're the only ones in the world the King chose to give this land, to give all its power. And if we find that someone's using it for financial means, for other reasons, outside of the Hapu chiefs and the public of New Zealand, then we will find out in the court. Okay? I'm going in as a King's Bench Court Judge of the Native Land. 
under the King William the Fourth, 1830 to 1837X. No one has changed them. No one can. John, no one can. Only us in the Hapu Whakamilinga Confederation of Chief Tribes can change that. Alter, delete, or amend those acts. So they apply to today until we can change them. John Key and his government got their own acts out of the 1852 UK British Acts of Westminster Parliament. They changed them into the 1986 Constitution, which really didn't do much good for the Hapu. Everything the government did here was a failure for the Hapu. Right through. They lost lots. That's Maori lost a lot. Maori lost a lot. Not Maori on this side. Maori, Maori on this side and the Iwi and the Crown Corporations under John Key's Australian New South Wales government and their assumed Admiralty, Vice Admiral, Governor General, Parliamentary Sovereignty, lost a lot from the Iwi Maori, took over the Hapu's business. Here, on this side, the King business, the Hapu control. Right? The Hapu controls this business with their chiefs, but not everyone is up to scratch. That is why, John, I'm bringing the British government under the Maui Crown King William Commonwealth Government of the World. We just shorten it down to Maui Crown Commonwealth Government of the World. Here, in that Maui, to the courts as a dual British government, Maui Hapu Chiefs Partnership Arrangement, dual government. The British are liable to square the books, audit the accounts, of our trust, the Queen Victoria Trust, that's where Kingy comes in. Kingy, that's your business with your ancestor, Queen Victoria, on this side, and Queen Elizabeth on this side, of the Crown Corporation, Australia, New South Wales, and New Zealand government, on that side. Queen Victoria and Queen Elizabeth here, King William here, and the Hapu. Business straight to Westminster. So Westminster government is liable to seize anything that's being fraudulent back into the King's Bench Court from this side, the Queen's Bench Court. Okay, there's a lot of that going on. 61 Cook Street, 77 Cook Street, 98 Wellesley Street is no different. It's the first one on the block. To investigate the titles on that side and switch them back to this side under the Maui Crown Commonwealth Government of the World, the Eight Point Star New World Order. The new World Order Government, the One World Order, is going to end up here with this flag, because the Pope has no admiralty to prove how he got all his money and all his power of trading. He never made it up inside a church. The church is a parliament. It came out of a king. He's usurped this flag because someone gave it to him. Someone gave the mana out of the flag to someone else. They're liable now. They're liable. So we'll leave that there, right there. Okay, so I, I hope I've made myself a little clearer of why we are putting this together. It's just business. This is only talking about business, John. It talks about business. It'll fit inside the Waitangi National Trust business from a hapu perspective. And we keep it in line. Me, you, and Kingi, and reliable people in a committee that we set up to trade 
under the Maori King William Trust that belongs to everyone in the world, okay, of this world Commonwealth government. That trust that I'm operating here in, in Britain with the other company, my powerhouse group Limited Limited company registered in the company's house in London. <coughs> and the Maui, Maui King William Party there, the political party to go straight into Westminster. I'll be going there to set that straight into action from here. So we've got a straight run, straight anywhere, and not have to go and make deals on the hop, hoping that it works. People will deal with us, John, because they trust us. They'll trust this flag, they'll trust the king, they'll trust the Maui statue because it's got no debts. It has absolutely no debts and no bad name attached to it. So I would like you to fly on your ship the very next day or even the same day on the 28th. Okay? And boot the horn. Okay, that's enough. Thank you very much, people. We'll see you later on this very nice day. And I'm just waiting for Kingy to come around to have a, a talk. I'm going to cancel my gym now, it's getting a bit late. Okay, so see you later everybody. Have a nice day.